Get ready everybody, it's time for iPhone 13. Welcome everybody to Apple Insider. It is Andrew here. You can find me on Twitter at Andrew underscore OSU. And with the iPhone 13 launch nearly days and weeks away, I wanted to break down everything that we think we know on Apple's new flagship device. So strap in besties, let's break down everything we think we know thus far. Starting off with the sizes, Apple is likely to retain the same screen sizes as we saw with the iPhone 12 lineup. That means we've got a 5.4 inch iPhone 13 mini, a 6.1 inch iPhone 13, a 6.1 inch iPhone 13 Pro, and a 6.7 inch iPhone 13 Pro Max. Don't expect this smaller 5.4 inch size to stick around another year though. The iPhone 14 is rumored to drop the 5.4 inch size. With iPhone 12 seeing the first major redesign in a few years, iPhone 13 is poised to look nearly identical. It'll retain the same overall look and feel, including the flat size. Rumors do say that the phones will increase by roughly a quarter of a millimeter, however, to accompany those new cameras and batteries that we'll talk about in just a few minutes. iPhone 12 launch is the first iPhone to support 5G, but I'm expecting the new iPhone 13 to include an upgraded processor. This new Snapdragon X60 processor or 5G processor from Qualcomm is supposed to be more energy efficient than the 5G chip in the iPhone 12. So we could get a little bit better battery life out of our 5G connectivity there. The iPhone 13 I also expect to support Wi-Fi 6E. So Wi-Fi 6E has a lot of the benefits of Wi-Fi 6 but can extend its bandwidth and it will support the 6 gigahertz spectrum which right now Wi-Fi 6 will only work with 2.4 and 5 gigahertz. We had initially heard that the iPhone 13 would be the first portless iPhone. That means the lightning port on the bottom would be nixed in favor of doing everything wirelessly or through MagSafe. But more recently, Ming-Chi Kuo, who is one of the most reliable analysts out there, has said that that is not gonna happen and the iPhone 13 will in fact still have a lightning port. Now that said, doesn't mean we're not ever going to get a portless iPhone. Kuo says the first instance we may see of a portless iPhone may be in 2022. If you're still hoping for USB-C, sorry, it's just never gonna happen. We look at the front of the iPhone, the new iPhone 13, at least the pro versions are supposed to be supporting a 120 Hertz pro motion display, similar to what we got on the iPad. It'll be able to ramp up to the 120 Hertz refresh rate when something is happening on the screen, things are moving, going on, you're scrolling, something like that. But when you're looking at static content, it's gonna slow the refresh rate down to help conserve battery life. So this new uh, 120 Hertz ProMotion LPTO display is going to be at least on the Pro models. We also expect the notches to be decreasing a little bit. Apple will be kind of combining a few of the sensors together to make more space, and they are relocating the earpiece from the middle of the you know, notch there all the way to that top edge. All that should reduce the width by quite a bit. It'll still be similar height, just a hair, hair shorter, but really we're decreasing the width here on the new iPhone 13. Other than that, things are going to stay pretty similar. The phones sound like they're about a quarter of a millimeter thicker that we already mentioned, um, but they're going to really look similar to what we saw with the iPhone 12. And no, I already told you this, Touch ID is not coming to the iPhone 13. Before I get to what may be my favorite feature of the iPhone 13, I got to thank our sponsor for this video, Zendur. Zendur makes some of the best charging accessories that I've tried. USB-C uh, chargers, battery packs, everything. I love them. And this is their new Super Base Pro, which comes in a 1500 watt hour and 2096 watt hour version. These things are massive. They are monsters. They are incredible. Check this thing out. There are like 14 outputs on this guy, including six AC outlets here on the side. There's a car adapter here. We have four four USB-C ports, including two 100 watt USB-C ports. There's a bunch of different inputs and connected to your wall, it can charge at up to 1800 watts, which means this massive battery can get to about 80% in an hour and 100% in two hours. That is nuts. There's also a solar panel option where you can daisy chain a bunch of solar panels together and go completely off grid and charge this thing up with solar panels and wall power at up to 2400 watts, which is 
insane. It has this glorious large screen in the front that tells you how much battery capacity you have left, how long it actually will last you, your current watt usage, so you can see how much your chargers are using and how much your output speeds are. It has 4G and Wi-Fi connectivity, so whether you are at home, your power goes out, you can still see how much battery and capacity and everything is remaining on this and get alerts before this thing dies. So if you're running something important like a fridge, you're gonna know even if you don't have Wi-Fi. Of course, there's an accompanying app that has a bunch of features, including be able to perform software updates, add additional features, uh, monitor this remotely, pretty much everything you need. And best of all, I mean, guys, it's on wheels. It is on wheels, which makes it immensely portable. I've been recently building a chicken coop and I've been dragging this thing out to the yard to run power tools on because it has surge protection up to like 4,000 or something. It's nuts. So if you guys are looking for a power station, I recommend you check this out. You can find the link for this down below in the description and let me know what you guys think. Otherwise, let's get back to talking about that iPhone 13. What is poised to be my favorite feature though of the iPhone 13 is reportedly an always on display. That's right, this could work similar to Apple Watch, where when it's plugged in, not being used, that display is always on, but the refresh rate drops ridiculously low to help conserve that battery life. And we can see things like the clock, uh, status icons for notification that had come in, and charging slash battery status. This sounds amazing, and I've been jealous of Android phones that could do this for some time. And I feel like it's long overdue for Apple Watch uh, for Apple to bring this to the iPhone. They brought it to the Apple Watch two years ago and I really expect them to do the same thing with the iPhone. And now seems like a better time than ever. Typically with S years, Apple puts a renewed importance on the cameras of the devices and iPhone 13 seems like no difference. There are a medley of improvements coming to the cameras across the entire lineup. Starting off with the iPhone 12 Pro Max's larger sensor, it sounds like it'll be expanding to possibly the entire lineup. At a minimum, it sounds like that new sensor will be coming to the 13 Pro. Right now, it is exclusive to the Pro Max, but it sounds like it's coming to the Pro as well with the iPhone 13. We've seen a lot of evidence of this just in these like dummy units that you see here where the camera bump itself is so much larger compared to the iPhone 12 Pro. So there's clearly some big improvements happening with the 13 Pro's cameras, but we're seeing changes to the camera bumps across the entire lineup. The 12 mini or the 13 mini and the 13 uh, both have these new angled cameras uh, that are caddy corner on opposing corners, and we're seeing larger camera bumps across just the entire lineup. The two Pro models here will likely be getting improved ultra-wide angle lenses. These new ultra-wide angle lenses will be going from an f2.4 to an f1.8 aperture, which allows more light in and to fix two of the biggest issues with the ultra-wide angle lens, which is it can be a little bit grainy at night and focus and autofocus is not stupendous. By allowing more light in, it's going to be quicker and going to improve autofocus in that regard, and it's going to reduce the grain on those low light images. Pro video users on the iPhone 13 Pro and 13 Pro Max are going to be welcoming the new edition of Apple ProRes. So ProRes is basically the video counterpart to Apple Pro Raw that was introduced with the iPhone 12. Basically, really large file size uh, 4K UHD video that includes as much detail as possible before you get into color grading and editing. So for those people who are actually using iPhone 13s for actual video production, that's gonna be a very welcomed addition. And for most users, they're gonna be happy to see what Apple's introducing for video, which is going to be portrait mode video. So just how you can shoot a portrait photo, you'll now be able to shoot portrait mode video. Uh, I don't know though if that's gonna be coming just to the Pro models or if it's going to be coming to the 13 and 13 mini as well. It sounds like more of a you know 13 Pro feature, but it also, portrait mode is very popular with everyone. So I, I could see this coming to just the entire lineup. And of course, all the new phones are running on the new A15 processor, so they should have enough power to do it. So whether or not they lead the LiDAR scanner that is going to stay exclusive to the 13 Pro and 13 Pro Max. Other features that I expect to see on the iPhone 13 lineup includes a one terabyte option that may be exclusive to the pros, but a one terabyte option, possibly faster wire charging all up to 25 watts of power. Uh, we may get new color options. We've heard of a like a sunset gold or bronze color coming to the pros and a matte black or jet black option coming to the entire lineup. 
I'm sure that one's going to be especially popular. MagSafe may be getting a slight tweak, nothing changing functionality wise, but it sounds like it could get stronger magnets, which will be helpful for things like the MagSafe wallet or car mounts, anything of that sort. And it sounds like batteries could be a little bit bigger. Uh, as I mentioned twice now, since they're a little bit thicker, could be to the larger batteries. Those, the larger batteries could just be to help offset the performance uh, drain coming from the 120 Hertz ProMotion display. Let's talk pricing and availability. Apple should be keeping the pricing the same. So the same pricing structure we saw for the iPhone 12 will be coming to the iPhone 13. So whatever the price points were then, they should be the same now, just with the newer models. Apple will likely be holding an event on September 14th, which means the pre-orders could start that Friday, which is September 17th, according to my calendar. Uh, and then pre-orders starting the 17th and then shipping on September 24th. That seems like the most likely schedule, though right now, no event is confirmed. But let me know what you guys think. Who is excited for the iPhone 13 lineup? Are you going to be getting one? Let me know over on Twitter at Andrew underscore OSU and stay tuned. We've got a whole lot more content coming as Apple's September event looms closer.